Now let's look at generating trigonometric functions on our CPU. Now if you're a bit unsure of trigonometry, then I have another full course on basic trigonometry and it goes through all of the details graphically. So I would suggest if you're sitting there scratching your head thinking, oh, I can't remember what the sine function is, then either have a look at that course or find out online before you head on to the rest of the course here. So we're going to look at the sine function. On the right hand side we've got a calling function, on the left hand side the subroutine just as usual. So in this calling function, again we want to keep everything as simple as we possibly can. So we're going to push the value that we want to work out the sine of. So in effect well, this is going to be our angle. So we want to find the sine of the angle. So we're going to have to pass the angle in as uh, a value in radians, not a value in degrees. Now I will produce another function which will allow us to generate the trigonometric functions by putting the angles in in degrees. But at the moment the, this one here will be for the input in radians. So we push the value of the angle in radians onto the stack. We jump to the subroutine sign. The subroutine is over here. It runs through the subroutine and it generates a number. So the number here is going to be a number between uh, plus one and minus one. And it pushes the final answer onto the stack within the subroutine here. And when it returns, we can just pop that answer back off on into the memory location called sine underscore x. So that in effect is the answer. So remember we're doing this with the fixed point numbers. The value for our x here we can put in. Now I'm not going to use this value here. We will use say for example uh, there's other values here. There's 60 degrees. So 60 degrees in radians is this number here. And whenever we return the result, the final answer should be uh, 0 cross 00, zero dd. Remember, this is going to be in our fixed point number system. And we can then convert that back to an actual value between plus 1 and minus 1. So that's the basic calling function. Let's look at the actual subroutine. So we go through our usual process of housekeeping here. And we're going to be using register R3 as a cumulative counter. So we want to just clear it off just to make sure there's nothing there before we start the actual um, usage of that register. So we're going to pop the return address we're going to pop the value of our angle and radians into register x1, into register r1. And we're going to initially, if the value for the angle is zero degrees, rather than working through a whole load of the, the code to generate the final answer, and the sign of zero is zero. So what this does is it just tests to see whether the input is actually zero. If it is zero, then it just go to the end of the program and just return the value of zero. It just saves a little bit of time. Now we're going to move a copy of the value x into register R3, and then we're going to use the Taylor um, series approximation for the sine function. So the Taylor series approximation for the sine function, we're going to use three terms. So it's going to be x minus x cubed upon 3 factorial plus x to the 5 upon 5 factorial. So if we work out these three here and add them together, we should get a, a value for the sine of our angle. Now, if you're unsure of the Taylor series and how it works, I have another course there 
called the Fourier and Laplace transforms and there's the very beginning of that course there's a, a video deriving the Taylor series and it shows you how it all works graphically. So you can always have a look at that or you can go online and you can brush up and uh, get an understanding of the Taylor series. So I don't want to get into the details of all of the mathematics within this course. It would just make the course far too long. And I have already worked through all of this in other courses. So we're going to have to work out the value of x. Well, we know the value of x. We, we, we've brought it in. So the, the first value of x is this 1.04719 blah blah blah. So, okay, so that's the first value of x. So we bring that in. And then we save it in register R3, so this is our running count. And then we're going to have to subtract off the x cubed upon 3 factorial. So rather than dividing by 3 factorial, what we can do is we can just multiply by the reciprocal. So 1 upon 3 factorial is 1 upon 6. But 1 upon 6 in actual decimal is going to be 0 0.166666. So we can just take this here and multiply. So that saves us working through a division algorithm. Now, the rest of this here is the um, generation of the x to the power of 3. So the x to the power of 3, we're going to have to push the values onto from register R0, 1 and 2 onto the stack. So in effect this is our uh, power function Ax to the power of n. So in this case here A is just 1 and our value for our x is the value that we put in here 1.04719755 okay so that's our value of x. So it's x to the power of 3. So we jump to the subroutine floating point math underscore power. It generates the cube of that value and then we can pop it into register R0. Now once we've popped into register R0, we have to go through the subtraction process. So these two lines here then perform the subtraction. So that's the second part of it. Now the last part again it's x to the 5 upon 5 factorial. So again, the 5 factorial, rather than dividing by 5 factorial, we can multiply by 1 upon 5 factorial, which is 1 upon 120, which is this number here. Now you can see here from this that it wouldn't be any use if we were to, say for example, uh, try to work out the next term in the Taylor series. Because the next term in the Taylor series, we would have a value of 1 upon 7 factorial. And 1 upon 7 factorial would be a number smaller than 0 0.008. In fact, it would be a number smaller than the resolution that we have for our fixed point number system. So it wouldn't be any use for us to go beyond that term. So we work through the same as we did above in order to generate the value for the x to the 5 upon 5 factorial. We have then generated the final answer and we're going to store the final answer in the memory location sign and we're going to push that value of that memory location onto the stack. And then we can finish off with our housekeeping here. And once that value is on the stack, again we can come in, we can uh, jump to the return address so we jump back up to the calling function and then we can pop that value back off. So that's how we're going to generate the sign function using the Taylor series on our CPU. And again we can do this with the cosine function and then we can generate the tan by dividing the two functions out. So let's look at a couple of examples of this actually working on our machine. So I have gone ahead and loaded the code into the CPU and we can see it running here. Now it will take a, a minute or so for it to run through. 
In the meantime, we can quickly talk about other ways of doing this. Now, we know that we only have 256 possible values that we will be able to generate. That's just the maximum limit that we're going to have for from our uh, fixed point number system. So if we wanted to, rather than working through this Taylor approximation, we could work out the actual values for those 256, say between 0 and 90 degrees. So we would have 256 points of resolution between 0 and 90 degrees. And of course, to generate the 90 to 180 and the 180 over to 360, we can just use the symmetry of the sine function. It means that we could just have a memory location set aside, which would in effect just be a lookup. So we could just look up the values that we require and it would run through a lot quicker than this. Now, we would have to do the same for, say, the cosine function. And if we wanted to, we could do the division of those numbers and generate another table for the tangent. So we could take our basic trigonometric functions and just have simple lookups. But we're not going to do that for the moment. We want to be able to run the algorithms, the nice kind of mathematical algorithms, and get the right results. So this should be just about done uh, any second now. And I always find it interesting to drop in and actually see the machine running. And it's always a fascination to me that irrespective of how many times you run it, it will always run exactly the same. So that's it finished. Let me just stop the simulation. And if it has run properly, we should get 00DD. So if we head in here, now here is the answer here. And you can see that we've got something close. We've got 00DE. So we are slightly out, but we're not bothering too much about the that tiny difference. Uh, we haven't implemented any real uh, detailed rounding mechanisms. We haven't looked at the accuracy um, and worked out what um, the actual bounds for our accuracy would be. We're just kind of generating the code and letting it run and see if we can get something close to the actual value. So that's value 00DE is out by a factor of 1. Okay, but that's one unit of resolution. But I'm happy with that. And we can uh, now go and we'll look and see what the actual value uh, 00DE and DD are. And we'll see the difference. So if you head into Google and just type in calculator, you'll have access to this calculator here. Now, if we want, we can just put it in degrees because we know the number in radians was actually 60 degrees. So you can put in the degrees here, sine of 60. And the answer should be 0 0.866. So this is root 3 up on 2. So let's have a look and we will see the answer we get with 00DE. Now we have a little piece of code here called hex to float. So you've got access to this within the resources section. So you can run this up. And if you type in the run, run without debugging. And it'll give you the option here to stick in some values at the bottom. So we're going to put in the value 00DE because that was the answer we got from our machine. And you can see here it gives us the value 0 0.867. So the value we were looking for is 0 0.866 and we get 0 0.867. So we're one thousandth um, out. Okay, so for in this particular instance, we got a very close result. And in fact, the result I thought I was expecting was 00DD. 
but 00 dd is actually further away, not 0.863. So the, the value 00 de is actually the, the correct value. Um, so that looks like it's worked uh, very well. Now, what I will do is I will go ahead and I'll test this out with uh, all 256 possible values. And I'll test that just over the entire range from 0 to 2 pi or if you like 0 to 360 degrees. I will also generate a piece of code that will allow us to convert from the degrees to radians and one from radians to degrees and the uh, trigonometric sine function for uh, an input in uh, degrees. So rather than putting that in, in radians we can just put a, an angle in, in degrees and it will give us the hopefully the correct answer. So still a bit of work to be done but it's a good start and uh, I'm pleased that our CPU is finally uh, able to do some uh, real mathematics. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.